There shouldn't be synonyms in there. It's chaos. So right at the very end, when fortunately, the drum and mill, we a firefighter, his helmet all blackened, visor melted, any man to walk around, knew him, said, yeah, I'm a bit of a state there, what's up then? Why are you sending us in there? Shouldn't be sending us in there, right? Get out then, get out. The firefighters didn't feel that they could come to me or the station manager and say, you shouldn't be sending us in there, it's too dangerous. Whereas when we looked at Paul's air wheel, GMC had a quite a different approach to that. Firefighters were like, nah, it's too, that's too dangerous. We'll take more defensive approach. And I like that. I like that thinking firefighter. And we're trying to get that into our firefighters now. That, yeah, we're here. We've got to we'll take some risk to save that property. But we won't go over and above, uh, over and above to do it. It's a building at the end of the day, isn't it? <coughs> Quite difficult for us to get our firefighters to think like that, if I'm honest. Um, a lot of them, even the sat there, no, no, we're always going, we're always going. But would you? Why would you? Um, and we looked at and we've implemented firefighter fatality protocols. And uh, we looked at uh, the, the unfortunate thing in the Paul's air well, And we asked ourselves, what would we do? What would we do at that point? And the answer was we'd be making it up on the spot to some extent. My uh, manager probably got a lot more information and a lot better way of dealing with it than me, but I'd be making it up on the spot as incident commander of that incident. So we've actually got, we've developed a protocol now where it's just click of a button on the MDT, print it off, and it's a check, it's a check sheet. Have we done this? Have we done that? And it's all based on crew welfare. <coughs> we've got to look after them firefighters. The most important asset we've got, and not all lot, People might not think it, and firefighters in general is firefighters. The most important asset to a fire service are firefighters. You've got to remember that's why we're all here. <coughs> so we've got this protocol, it leads all the way down. So we've got an operational one, and we've got command and control, and we've got one for our control as well. So we just make sure we hit everything and we cover, we cover everything. Um, that that got, uh, rolled out probably 18 months ago. I'm on the second round of uh, these exercises, so I've started the sick pump exercise again. So I'm, I'm doing all that, and I introduce that now. So a firefighter gets rescued from the building, they start doing CPR on him, uh, but then they come out with protocols. And we've actually found by doing it, the sheet that we've originally come up with needs amending. There's things missing off it, or there's things that aren't quite right. So it's, we've tested it, it's not quite right, right, we're going to change it now. Um, but if we hadn't done the testing of it, the first time it was going to be used was a, a real incident, and that's not right, is it? Um, BA sector commander role changed in 2016 from all the main control. But again, it was just well, we gave refreshing change to all our uh, station commanders and group managers. On you couldn't get given this role. This is what you're looking at. Uh, we'd also in, uh, implement. We'd also introduce on it. Uh, Dragon telemetry boards in that time, so a lot of station commanders were familiar with that, so I gave training on that. A lot of flashing lights, you know, like a Christmas tree at time if there's all lights on. So I gave them that training uh, in that, that. And things that they can ask an edge control officer, well, what's that doing? Why is that doing that? Or can you tell me the breathing rates of these individuals? Um, and we've looked at sharing our learning with other fire rescue service, like I said, we've had. Uh, we've had colleagues from South Yorkshire, North Yorkshire, Hungerside, Leeds Bradford Airport, Manchester Airport. We've been over to uh, Manchester uh, and we've spoken to colleagues over there. Uh, we've we shared Drummond Mill with them. I think Drummond Mill's gone on their National Operational Learning site now. Um, and just, you can gain a lot of information. There's no good us sitting on something. Um, one of the best uh, DVDs I've seen from them was the one from Shirley Towers when that came out. I thought that was a great, great learning tool. But we could have done that with Drummond Mill as an e-learning, but we, we touched on early e-learning. I might deliver that to my crew and go be a bit more enthusiastic about it, or somebody might go, no, is this what we're doing tonight? Any questions? So by us delivering it and talking to crews and getting people's thoughts on it, we actually learned more from that than we did from any debrief process I have ever been involved in. Um, 
so for me it was a great learning tool. Uh, on the back of that we now run a half day um, session and uh, the current one is we are doing Balmoral Bar and any learning from West Yorkshire so our fire investigation department run that so they're, they're key in everything that we go to really um, and again they run it as an open discussion getting that information from our crews. They're the things that we're focused on. Uh, they're the things we thought were quite important from what came out of, certainly from Drummond Mill and from when we were talking to crews. Decision making based on risk versus benefit. Some of our crews, some of our firefighters, they were telling us conditions in, in the basement of Drummond Mill. They were 80 metres in the basement of Drummond Mill. They were laid on their floors, on, on the floor, because it was so hot, trying to fight a fire, and the water was a foot deep around them. And then when you say that in a room, and everybody goes, why well, would you be there? Because we had that in West Yorkshire. That's where that crew thought, that's what they had to do, because they'd been to fight a fire. That's wrong. We've got to change that culture, we've got to change that. We've got to get onto that risk and benefit. What's the risk to me there? I'm going to die, what's the benefit? There's no benefit, is there? This is an old room that's been on fire for an hour at this point. Have the confidence to withdraw or ask help if they're in trouble. We were finding more and more our crews that would never press their ADSU because a training centre would get into trouble for it. Or their perception was they'd get into trouble for it. That's the furthest thing from the truth. If somebody asks for help in a BA job, we, we help them, don't we? We support them. Uh, be prepared for plan B, it's off RTCs, we always have a plan B. Building fires, we don't always have that, do we? We, all, we get a bit focused or we go down one route and, and it's that road over and it's that what if question, um, what supplies, things like that. Uh, and another one, conditions and rollover. I was down in Devon and Somerset, I did my FBTI down there six years ago. Um, great techniques and stuff like that, come back, start teaching in West Yorkshire. Um, and what do I do as a, as a fire beer instructor? Bring people into a container, sit them down, get the fire rolling above their heads and let them start dealing with it. That's the most unsafe situation that anybody can possibly be in in a breathing apparatus environment. But I was teaching that. Um, our crews thought it was, it was safe to sit under flame above your head. That's not safe. Get it from the door, don't go in. They thought it's had fun because that's what we taught them in the training. So we looked at revamping all that, how we train people, how, how we train them in, in fighting fires. Um, and it brought up quite a lot of uh, discussions at that point. Um, that well, we have to get in, we have to get in. Not with the technology we've got now and the equipment that we've got in the, in the hose reels, the tanks, the pump, the fire engines, the, the pumps that we've got on them. I could hit a fire in this room from, from here. I don't have to go right up to the back corner to tackle that fire. I can hit it from here with the pumps that we've got. Why are you going to put yourself in that, in that risky situation? A lot of the feedback that we've got, so it, it was important that me, that me, uh, me and Chris uh, and, and Jim and Nick, who were, who were our main sponsors and drivers on, it's no good me having a good what I think is a good idea and something to pass my time away training. We had to get that feedback from our crews. Is the training that we're giving them, is it actually what they need and what they want? Um, the feedback that we got was, it was almost, um, I, I was quite taken aback by it really that it, it was high as it was and more, and more so that so many people actually took the time to fill the feedback out. We only got, um, I think, a couple that, out of all the sessions that run, and when you're thinking I've run 60 days um, seminars, we've done 28 six pump exercises, we've done 19 days of four exercises a day, uh, tap vent, and all the number of other exercises that we did, we only had two negative comments against what we did. One was the venue won't quite, won't the best, well, you could get turned out to that venue, so that's what you got. Uh, and another one was they didn't perform particularly well, so they try and stay away from us. But we followed up, uh, went and spoke to them because I, I believe 
they are important and their their views are important to me. And if somebody's not happy with the chain I provided for them, then I need to discuss that. When we went and spoke to them, it just turns out. Uh, I think you said earlier, um, some people are oh, no, we only got a training centre. But I bet when they went to training centre, then same people were saying, why are we going to training centre all the time? Some people in the fire service are just never happy. Either. You've got to, you've got to wear that. Up. We also had a guy called um, Bill Goff, uh, West Mids. So I used to be when he was CEO down there, something like that, area manager. He's now retired, and he's doing a piece of work nationally on firefighter safety, and basically looking at firefighters. And he, he approached us, um, and he said he approached a lot of fire, fire services throughout the country, and nobody really interested in, in supporting him or, or taking him on, which quite surprised me. Um, so. He, he, he came with a seminar with us, uh, viewed that, and then we got up talking to him. So we, as West Yorkshire, we took it on, we're going to support the work that Bill were doing. Uh, basically, we looked at all our injuries over the last 10, operational injuries over the last 10 years. We brought them down from, what's I think it was something like 800, Jim? 800, we got that down to actually 25 injuries cases that actually fitted, to fit the criteria that Bill wanted, set them to him. And I'm just waiting, I'm hopefully going to get the results back from this, uh, from that this week. And he's looking at, it's a, why, why did you do that, you know, and that's the case. I was going to break that door in with Ram, but rather than holding it correctly, I thought I'd do it this way. Why, why did you do that? If we could prevent more injuries to firefighters, obviously, no one's getting injured. But then the long term, the, or the financial gain, if you like, if you want to go down that, we not people off on the sick, not people injured. We're not having to cover them positions on the fire engine. We thought, for the level of commitment we've got to give to support Bill, it will be well worth it. Um, and again, the, the bottom one, uh, I, we, we put that on, doesn't mean anything to anybody in this room other than my three colleagues, probably. You talk to these people from, from this shift, and they are that, why are we headquarters again? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? And they sat through seven hours of me and Chris talking to them and actually came up at them and shook his hand and said thank you. And I'm like, something not quite right here. But they found it, they found it engaged and found it. Wow, you actually are starting to listen to what we're saying. Um, which again, if that were, that were, we thought that was good. So moving forward, um, Chris retired in October last year. So I've come back to station, so I'm a watch manager uh, of station now in West Yorkshire. But I continue running the BA exercises, so I'm probably three quarters of the way through our second round of the exercises where I said that we've introduced the next stage of the five part talk protocol. Uh, we're running the, the seminars still. Um, I'm just on with trying to secure some high rise buildings, so in West Yorkshire, in West Yorkshire close, to, close to where I am. Um, so I'm hoping to put high rise exercises on. Me personally, I don't think we've got the facility in my shop or we've done enough training um, for our crews in, in high rise. Um, so we're looking at that. I have meetings regularly with my, my area managers um, and they, they drive me in, to where, I, where they want, where they think that we need to go from nationally, what they're getting from things like this, um, but also from listening to our crews uh, from their station visits what our crews want. Like I said, that's what we've focused on throughout the exercises, throughout the seminars, everything we've done has been on that. It's all about getting our firefighters thinking and being safe in, in what they do. And that, ladies and gents, is a great snapshot of, of what we've done over the last sort of 18 months and moving forward. These are just a few, a few pictures of what we've got on. That's actually GMC when we went over there. Great training facility in Bury, if you get the chance to go and view it, I'd highly recommend it. Um, then this, that's from Drew and Mill. Any questions? Yeah, I've got one, uh, one question. Um, it's around the firefighter safety project and yeah. uh, what you explained, you know, the really good intervention there to support with that culture with, with your staff and understand that risk benefit analysis yeah. because as commanders when we send people in they are doing their risk 